what was your initial reaction to the uh, to the report being released when it was released? Well, you know, I fully concur uh, with the uh, with the findings that uh, uh, Indigenous women are, are vulnerable in our society. Uh, you know, that's something I've been talking about for years as the chief of police here in Saskatoon. Many chiefs have been talking about that. We know that uh, Indigenous women are, are unfortunately sometimes are subjected to poverty and poor housing and racism and disadvantage. So I completely agree with the findings there, and and, and they are in a very vulnerable spot. There was one instance in the report that we were getting this morning uh, that detailed Saskatoon police treatment of uh, one woman in a jail cell where she was stripped down completely and thrown to the ground in her cell uh, and left there all night in, in cold conditions. Uh, what, what was your reaction when reading that? Well, I would hope that that uh, didn't occur that way. Uh, if they did, there was a reason for it. Uh, I can assure uh, you and the public that everything that happens in our detention area is fully uh, on video, audio. Uh, we keep a record of that. If such occurrence did uh, did happen, we would ask those people to come forward so we can check on that and see what the circumstances were. I mean, we put all these we put all these fail-safe things in in place, and in the event that somebody does come forward with a complaint, that we can either justify what happened or find out if, if we did something wrong or and I guess that was one of the things that I find with this report is that uh, there's some uh, general allegations here uh, but there's not a lot of substance so we can't go back and check and see what's happened and I think uh, most of you would agree that anytime there's a, a complaint of misconduct by a police police officer it's usually an individual case it's not the whole police service so I mean as a police chief uh, I find these very serious when allegations come forward like this and I have no way to go back and check and see if that's really what happened or what did happen or try to make uh, amends to the person where it did happen. Chief have you received or th through the Public Complaints Commission received any allegations of for instance male officers strip searching women in Saskatoon? No I haven't I've had no uh, complaints about that and once again in our detention area uh, it's all full audio, video. Uh, we have strict policy on strip searches. Uh, that isn't something that really occurs very often in uh, in uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, we do have different policies than they do in Ontario. Uh, I've had no complaints from the Provincial Complaints Commission on this. Uh, we have probably the highest ratio of female police officers in Canada. We have a full staff in our detention area of uh, uh, female matrons, female special constables. There would be no reason in Saskatoon for a male to be uh, searching somebody in custody. Just out of curiosity, uh, you guys have talked uh, about this in the past, last year as well. Any other recommendations that you might be working on right now, just to ensure there's proper education for these officers, Indigenous education and whatnot as well? You know, that's a great point, and I think that's something that's missing from this report. Uh, there's no balance. And uh, I'm not trying to be defensive one bit. But there's no balance to this report. It's, it's very negative about what policing have done, but they give policing in general right across Saskatchewan no credit for the work that we've done in the past decade. And you know, for instance, uh, in Saskatoon, every single member within our police service has gone through intensive training on history of Indigenous relations in Canada, the colonialism, uh, the 60s scoop, uh, the white paper, uh, things that have been in impacted upon our Indigenous population so that our officers understand why we're in the dilemma that we are right now in society in Canada. So we've done that. Uh, you know, we have special victim services uh, officers that work with Indigenous people uh, for uh, uh, that work with Indigenous persons that have been a victim of a crime. We have a Indigenous uh, Missing Persons Coordinator that just deals strictly with missing persons that have to do with Indigenous people. We have an Indigenous Liaison Officer that works with the uh, Indigenous population in Saskatoon. I mean, we've put so many things in place, yet none of that is mentioned in this report. It's all just the negative things that have happened in, in policing. And, and some of those could be historical. We don't know because it's, it's very vague with the, uh, with the allegations that have come forward. How long is that intensive training? It starts with the Saskatchewan Police College. Every municipal officer that's uh, that started has it's approximately lasts about a week on diversity training. Most of it has to do with Indigenous affairs. Right after the Stone Child Inquiry, every single member uh, went through a three-day intensive course that was put together by uh, uh, Mr. John Lajemodier from the Eagle Feather News, uh, a justice, uh, and uh, gee, it just escapes me now. Uh, international. Uh, oh. I can't think of the name of it now. It, uh, it was Helen McIntyre Smith, who was uh, representing. Gosh, somebody help me here. Uh, for re some reason, it just won't come out. Amnesty International. Uh, we put an intensive program together. Uh, so once again, our officers were learning what the history is of Indigenous culture, uh, ways we can help work with the Indigenous population in Canada. Uh, 
we have uh, lunch and learns that go on uh, every quarter. We, we have our uh, uh, Indigenous elders that are coming in, talking about uh, 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 women, uh, Indigenous issues, talking about the cultural issues to do with Indigenous population, talking to do about the history with Indigenous population. I'd have to say of any police service in Canada, we're probably the leading agency that works on this. I mean, we've got a history here. We know about our history. We've learned from our history. We're trying to heal what's going on here. And, you know, when a document like this comes out and gives our service and policing in Canada absolutely no credit for a lot of the work that's being done. I think it's very, very unfair. Chief, when you talk about um, the various things in society that uh, Indigenous people are suffering from, um, do you have any comment then uh, to the Saskatchewan government that uh, funds many of the very kinds of programs you refer to? Well, you know, I've been outspoken on this as well, too, and, you know, it concerns me when we uh, unfortunately see some dollars cut into some of the programming that we see that, in my opinion, is very crucial to uh, helping uh, the, the whole situation, the socioeconomic conditions that our Indigenous population is facing here, not just women, men, the whole Indigenous population. And I think as a society, we've really got to start to think about how we're going to get uh, our heads together on this, how can we work together on this to try and improve the, uh, the conditions for our Indigenous population. What would be the reason uh, for when you bring somebody in for public intoxication or something of the like to conduct a strip search? There usually wouldn't be much of a reason. Uh, I do have to say we've had uh, five deaths in our cells over the last decade. Almost every death had to do with uh, drug overdoses. We had one death where somebody did ingest drugs uh, that they had brought into the cell block with them. So, And when we're talking about a strip search, uh, there's nothing in in invasive bodily for this. If we have to do an invasive uh, bodily uh, cavity search, that person is taken to the hospital and it's done by a medical practitioner. It's never done by a police officer. We have stringent rules on that, on, on, on chain of command and how a strip search can be conducted. The only time one would ever would be done is if we fear for somebody's health. We're scared that they're going to try to hang themselves or hurt themselves. That would be the only time and it would be conducted by a female. Like I say, we have the luxury here in, uh, in Saskatoon that we have female staff on hand 24-7 hours a day. So uh, once again, with a broad brush of what's happened with this report, we don't know really who they're talking about in some of these allegations. It could be the RCMP, it could be Regina, it could be Yorkton, it could be Prince Albert, it could be Saskatoon. So we have no way of even checking on any of this. If they provided more details about uh, the person reporting it and what happened, would you consider opening up an investigation? Absolutely, we would open up a case on this. And I think uh, we've been very forward on, on how we deal with, uh, with investigations to do with police misconduct. And I think that's another issue that I'd like to raise, too. With, you know, they, they, uh, they talk about the, the uh, civilian oversight in Saskatchewan. Uh, it's only an advisory. It doesn't really have teeth. Well, it does. I mean, any... any uh, misconduct by the police that may stem with their criminal charge, it always goes to SAS prosecutions for their opinion on that. And if SAS prosecution says a charge should be laid, a charge is laid. So they're not advisory bodies. And these bodies were set up with a full participation and endorsement by the FSIN following the Stolen Child Inquiry. So, I mean, this is something that the FSIN had a hand in, setting up this whole civilian oversight into policing in Saskatchewan. We work very closely as a police service with the uh, FSIN uh, Special Investigations Unit. Uh, we share the files with them, we work with them on the files. I think, in our opinion, uh, we're a very open service and we work very openly with the FSIN on this. But, uh, as they mentioned, there are only five jurisdictions in Canada that don't have that separate body. Do you feel as though the same quality of investigation is happening without that body in Saskatchewan? I think the body that we have in Saskatchewan is the model for, uh, for our officers trust it. Our officers uh, give statements to the investigators uh, from, uh, from the Special, uh, Special Investigations Unit uh, from the Provincial Complaints Commission. If there is uh, any bodily injury or any uh, misconduct of a serious nature, uh, a, a, a police officer from another jurisdiction is assigned to make a special report to the Minister of Justice bypassing the police agency uh, so it is a very objective review of what's happened in the incidents. I think we have a great, uh, a great system that works both ways that the police trust and I would hope that the public can trust. We've come a long way from where we were uh, pre-Stone Child. Uh, how, we de how we deal with these and how the Provincial Complaints Commission has been formed and the work that we do with the investigators. Uh, Chief, the, um, in the people who held the news conference today, Human Rights Watch, said that the police target Indigenous people for um, offences that other people are let go on, such as public intoxication. They point out that there's lots of non-Indigenous people who become intoxicated in public and are not brought into cells. Well, you know, we've worked very closely with the uh, with the FSIN, the Saskatoon Tribal Council, the health region. I think you've all heard me speak on this before. I don't believe anybody that's intoxicated should be in a police cell. 
We've been asking for uh, for uh, better facilities within Saskatoon and other cities in Saskatchewan. We firmly believe that this is a health issue. It's not a crime issue. And nobody should be in cells uh, for public intoxication. It's a health issue. Um, one of the allegations in the report referred to women who are trying to report domestic abuse and they end up being arrested on minor charges such as intoxication. Uh, is this something that you've noticed happens in Saskatoon police uh, procedures or like is this something that happens often? This would not be something that happens often. We follow the very strict criteria. As you well know, uh, probably 10 or 12 years ago, the pendulum had really swung on domestic violence. And uh, the police now are mandated that a charge must be laid if they believe that the grounds are there for a domestic violence charge, whether it be the male that's done it or whether it be the female that's done it. And, uh, you know, the pendulum swung so far to the, uh, to the right on this, so hopefully we can start to bring it back a little bit because it puts our officers in a very tenable situation where they're mandated to lay a charge. And uh, sometimes that gets us into a little bit of trepidation because should that charge be laid, shouldn't it be laid, who was the aggressor, who wasn't the aggressor, it puts our officers in a very tough spot. What message do you have for your officers now that this report is out? The message is to our officers? Yeah, what are you going to tell them about hearing about this report on the news? And what's your message to your officers about it? Well, the message to our officers is I think uh, the Saskatoon Police Service can hold its head high. I don't believe anybody's done any more work on missing and murdered Indigenous women than the Saskatoon Police Service has. Yes, we have our failings. Every, every organization does. I'm not saying we've hit utopia. But I think uh, we're, we're a very well-run organization. I think we're an organization that cares. It's an organization that's uh, had a lot of training in dealing with the Indigenous public. And uh, we've come a long way in this last decade. And, uh, and I think our officers should hold their heads very, very high on the work that we've done. Do you feel the same mistrust? Because the report is talking a lot about the mistrust from the indigenous woman. You know, I, I would I would never doubt that, you know, with the history of our service and history with policing in Canada in general, I, I would say there's a mistrust uh, in the Indigenous population in general uh, towards the police. And I think that's very understanding. I mean, uh, we all have a history, and uh, our history is what we make our world view on. So I completely understand that. And that's what we've been trying to work on, and that's, I guess, what I think disturbs me about a report like this, because it has no balance. So all it does is add to the talk about how bad the police are, and we don't do anything, we don't train, we don't do this, when in fact we are doing a lot of these things. It, there's no balance to the report. To go back to the earlier question, though, do you keep statistics on how many uh, of the people who are brought into the cells for intoxication, do you keep any statistics on how many of those people are Indigenous and are not and others who are not because this the allegation is that indigenous people are targeted and brought into cells because of public intoxication at a rate higher than non-indigenous people who are intoxicated yeah. no I, I wouldn't have those figures for you but that brings up another point uh, uh, talking about uh, you know collecting uh, race-based information uh, it has been their suggestion that uh, uh, they would like more data on uh, on indigenous women that have been victims of crime and I completely understand that but once again, that puts us in a very tough spot because say your house is broken into or you're the victim of a crime and a police officer comes up to you and he's taking the report and then the next question out of his mouth is, oh, by the way, uh, are, you, uh, are you Indigenous? Are you Métis? Are you Inuit? And the next thing out of that person's mouth is, why are you asking me those questions? Are you going to treat me differently now because I'm Indigenous? So it puts the police in a very tenable spot again when we start to talk about race-based things because it, it gets a backwards discrimination on the police and why are you asking these questions? Are you going to treat me any differently? That's why we haven't been ask collecting those uh, that data. Can you start? If you say it's for statistics? So that we can stop violence you know, we've got to have conversations with the, with the Tribal Council on this and, and the FSIN and, and other Indigenous uh, leadership uh, within, within the province. We talked about this about uh, six or seven years ago, and uh, it was all coordinated through the province that it was probably best at that time not to be tried to collecting that data, so we haven't. So, I mean, we can have those discussions again. Well, there's one thing to be collecting data when you're out dealing with victims of crime, but the specific allegation is that Indigenous people are brought in for drunkenness more often than others. And are you saying that you cannot gather that information to find out if this is true? Oh, I could, uh, we could probably do a study on that and, and find out what the numbers are. We don't generally do that. Well, then you can't really say that they're being unfair about it if you're not collecting the data. No, I I'm not saying that, I didn't say that you're unfair about it. I said that we haven't got the data on it. And it would be, in my uh, policing experience, probably, unfortunately, more Indigenous people have been brought in for uh, public intoxication than not. 
During the news conference this morning, uh, Regina police released their statement saying something along similar lines as you, saying that this is very a very one-sided report. And uh, uh, Vice Chief Heather Bear was asked about it, and she said that the denial is disturbing. Uh, how do you respond to that if you're saying something similar as Regina police, and that was her reaction? Well, you know, I've got no denial on it. All I'm saying is there's not a lot of balance to it. So I completely agree, like I say, with some of the things that are in that report. But I think it would be nice if we had a little bit of balance so that we can see that, you know, the police are trying to, you know, do some good things within our province and it isn't all bad. That's my only point here. No, yeah, we do have our, we do have our failings. I, I don't deny that. So where do you go from here? Who do you talk to? What do you do to try and uh, not just address this report, but also the yeah. concerns that come up in this report? Well, I would hope that this would raise awareness and that people, uh, especially from in Indigenous descent, would understand that uh, there's an avenue open to them if they have complaints against the police through, the, uh, the, uh, through FSIN, through their SIU. They don't even have to come to a police service if they've got a complaint. And I want to assure the public and our Indigenous population that we're going to investigate everything thoroughly here. You know, I've often said that, you know, I can't be 100% uh, sure what our police officers do every single minute of the day, every day. But I can guarantee you that if you make a complaint, about police misconduct of the Saskatoon Police Service that will get investigated fully and we'll get to the bottom of it and it'll be done fairly. When the Human Rights Watch representatives met with police in 2016, was there any, did you have any idea that this kind of report like this was going to be released? Well, when they first met with us, they had uh, almost the carbon copy of what they've got in their report right now. Uh, with the allegations and their thoughts and they asked every police agency if we, they sent about 37 questions that they wanted us all to answer and we did and we met with them face to face and and told them about the things that we've been doing and told them yes about our history and that we tried to make the healing and you know we tried to give them the whole story and we thought we would get a balanced report out of this uh, and we didn't and once again I'm not denying I'm not saying that uh, anything is it, it, it was utopia here we know it's not all we're asking for is some balance when somebody puts in a report like this because all it does is add to the, the angst that people have when people read this. If they have no balance to it, the next conclusion they jump to is re things are chaotic here and, and they're not. Uh, our province, I think, has run very, very well with the police misconduct and the oversight that happens here. When we're talking about mi possible misconduct, though, I is it the job of this report to say, yes, there is misconduct, but hey, you guys are doing a good job here? It, it, is that really their job, or sh like, should it not just be concerning to you of these allegations of this misconduct? Absolutely, it's concerning, and that's why we've asked them. We asked uh, when they first met with us, could you please talk to the people that have these allegations? If they've got an idea that something was done wrong with them, please have them come forward. Go to the FSIN where you feel safe to do that so that we can look into this. If we can't, because some of these allegations, they could be 20 years old, they could be 10 years old, they could have happened last year, like we don't know. The one example I brought up to you, uh, it appeared to have happened between 2014 and 2015. Yep. And once again, if, uh, if the people that were involved in this would come forward through the FSI and through their SI, you will look into it and we'll open an investigation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day.